Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4 of Enigmatica 2 Expert. How are you doing? So in between the episodes I realized that this is not going to be a mod pack that I can finish in 10 episodes like Stoneblock. Um, we're probably going to go until episode 20. So I decided to make this place look more homely, make a mark on the map and make some new buildings which we are going to visit very soon. I know they're not a work of art but I have limited material and this is like after 10 attempts. So it's still a work in progress. Food is an issue in this mod pack and I decided to make a kitchen which is also a quest. Um, I'm not a fan of having a huge base which I just dump everything inside and never leave it. So I decided to make a kitchen hut for myself. It looks brown, actually too brown. I don't know why I went for brown. Um, I used to have flowers here but I removed them because it's a kitchen and if I have flowers then it looks too girly. <laughs> also these barrels from Rustic they are very cheap and they give you the same inventory slots as a chest. So that's nice. Um, this will be our kitchen and I just have to set it up. Okay, so I was missing a bunch of stuff, I had to go and craft them. Anyway, this is a multi-block structure and as long as everything is connected, then you should be able to make all the recipes which you have the material for inside your fridge. So basically I just have to put every food source inside here and then see what kind of complicated food I can make so that I can balance my nutrients. This is the kitchen. That is good and I just have to make some farms around here because... Um, we're not producing food. My next plan is to get into mechanism and try to triple our ores. Right now I'm doing manual mining, so if we manage to get ore tripling, that means less mining, more resources, and that will make me happy. This is the place that I want to set it up, and I just made this small structure, and uh, we need to craft some machines. The problem is that I made a lot of these, uh, the green stuff. I made a lot of those so I don't have any osmium left and we require a lot of osmium in order to do all the machines. So I will do some mining and I'll be right back. I prepared everything that we are going to need in order to triple our ores and the way this works is very simple. So the thing that you're going to need is clump. You get 3 clumps per ore. You put the ore inside the purification chamber and you get the clump. You put the clump inside the crusher, you get the dirty dust. You put the dirty dust inside an enrichment chamber and you get pulverized and of course we just melt it. Easy peasy. Um, the only thing missing here is an electrolytic separator and a pump which we have it there at our perpetual motion machine. Which is still running by the way. <laughs> That's good. So um, some people told me that the reason that this thing is not working is that I'm not saving energy because I'm using a pump. Uh, the pump uses 6.3 RF. This thing uses 320. So even if I switch that I'm not saving that much energy. Um, Really? How much damage do you do? Okay. That's nice. First is the electrolytic separator. Then the purification chamber. And I also made gas upgrades for this because it will consume less oxygen per process and it will save energy, I hope. The crusher. The enrichment chamber and the energized melter and I'm getting energy Woo! No! We need to get into Botania very soon then um, I tried to fix it but um, anyway I was going to say that I'm generating RF here using solar panels and everything is connected everything is hooked up we have water and if we want to give this thing a test we have to put the iron ore here and this could take some time and we get three iron ingots per ore which is good the only problem is that this is very slow but um, I'm not sure if I'm producing enough RF to upgrade them 
Maybe I give it a try. We can at least upgrade them to basic factories and they're full of energy upgrades so they shouldn't use that much RF. Um, my idea is that this crate uh, will be hooked up to the purification chamber. I just dump the ores inside, they get processed and until we have an ender chest of some sort, which the recipe for it has been changed, everything goes inside this chest. For me that's fine. Alright guys, I upgraded them into basic factories and the idea is that whenever I go mining I gather stuff in my satchel and then I deposit my satchel inside this crate and they get sucked in into this purification chamber and get processed. Um, I'm also saving some of the hydrogen if we want to get into gas burning generators later on. Um, these tanks are actually very cheap so I can make them again. Um, the good thing about it, this is that if we get into automatic quarries and resource generation, um, it would be easy to just stack them up like, uh, I don't know, three or four rows. So this will be sufficient until the end of the game, which is good. I'm happy. I thought nine solar panels should be enough to power this setup, but um, we're losing power very slowly, but we are losing it. Um, maybe I should get into mechanism solar panels because someone said that they are much more efficient. It's just crafting, right? I'll be right back. I made two advanced solar generators from mechanism and they each make 320 RF. Am I reading it correctly? <laughs> That's good. So uh, with this we are actually gaining some RF so that is good. Yeah everything is charged up and uh, we're good to go. We can start with Botania, Tomcraft and Astro Sorcery. How did I get in here? Before we start with the next project, I forgot to show you what loot we got. So, this is everything I collected, including the last few uh, loot cases that I got. And there's nothing particularly special in it. There was some food which I ate, and we just got the Axe of the Vibran, which was pretty cool. And also this, which at first I thought it's an ME controller. It looked like it. Hi. Alright guys, the three magic mods in this mod pack are interconnected. So, for instance, in order to make a petal apothecary from Botania, we need a luminous crafting table from Astral Sorcery. So, I just need to find the temple, which is there, and I'll be right back. We put our crafting table here, and we should make a bunch of stuff. So, the first thing is a resonating wand, which is your wrench in this mod pack, and the other one is a luminous crafting table, which is here. There you go, we're done. Alright guys, I had to wait for night time because the luminous crafting table only works with starlight which happens during the night. So, I have all the ingredients inside the luminous crafting table and that's the problem with a mod which only works during the night. So, we right click with our resonating wand and things will happen. In short, we will have our uh, petal apothecary. Go away. The Petal Apothecary is your crafting table in Botania, so with this you can craft all the flowers in Botania, functioning or generating flora, which is very good. But in order to craft them, we are going to need a bunch of ingredients, which is mystical flowers. Luckily, we were rewarded a flower pouch, so we have to go and gather flowers. And in order to do that, we are going to wear our pink suit, and then we are going to hold the flower in our hand, and look very cute. Oh, and no sword. There are 16 flowers and you only need one. You don't need more than one. I gathered more than one but it was not required because you can grow them and get more petals. The first flower that we're going to have to craft is a pure daisy. That's your gateway into Botania. So we fill this thing with water, we drop four white petals and one seed. And we get a pure daisy. In this mod pack, the recipe for living rock has been changed. So instead of smooth stone, you are going to need arcane stone from Tomcraft. And I have a lot of rubber wood. It doesn't work. <laughs> Infused wood. With what? Alright guys, we have a small complication. In order to make infused wood, we are going to need to put wood inside starlight. How do we get starlight? We need a light well. A light well requires a rock crystal. Luckily, 
I have some rock crystals because I was mining on Y level 6 and I managed to find one ore and it gave us like two crystals, uh, four crystals. So we're going to use two of them in order to make two light wells and I guess we have to wait for night time. Oh no, we don't. That's nice. So finally they accepted that sun is also a star and uh, we don't have to wait for Alpha Centauri. This is the crafting recipe for a mechanical user. I'll do it manually. For now I don't have a space so I guess we just put it here and this should make starlight. Yep. Very slowly. We need one bucket. Cool. We have one bucket. In order to make a mana spreader, we're going to need illumination powder, which requires a yellow night ore. So, we need to get into Tomcraft. One crafting table and Stylus Mundus. And my particles are off, so yeah. We have an arcane workbench. We put our crystals inside and try to make a thermometer. So I believe the recipe was like this. I only make two because I think we need one for the glasses. So we need to do some research. Yep, this one's done. Now that I have scanned the world and we have a few uh, observations, we can complete this one and then we make a crucible and I think the next one is Nitor. One cauldron, Silas Mundus and we will also scan this. Yes, we have reached Nitor. That is great. So we have to do a little bit of alchemy. Uh, okay. In order for the crucible to work, it has to be placed on top of fire or night ore. But we don't have night ore, so we place it on top of fire, we fill it in with water and we wait for it to boil. I think it should be ready. So in order to make night ore, we put coal, torches and we should get night ore. Yes! Great! Um, now we can turn off the fire and use night ore instead. Good! And we can get our illuminating powder. And one mana spreader. We also need a mana pool, a runic altar and a bunch of other stuff. Do you guys remember when I said you only need one petal? Um, this is why. You plant it down, you bone mill it, you shear it and you get four. So you only need one flower. So we have a mana spreader, a mana pool and a wand of the forest, which is literally your wrench. You can uh, configure everything with this, like so. But we want it to face the mana pool. So in order to generate mana, I'm thinking of using endo flames if the recipe for them has not been changed, which it has not. That is good. So I'll craft a few endo flames and I'll be right back. You know guys, this is the reason that I wanted to get into Botania and I got it from a reward. We still need to get into Botania because without mana this is useless. Uh, this is the second reason that I love Botania, the Rod of the Shifting Crust. And we have it. Alright guys, this is our endoflame setup, so it's nothing very complicated. We have 8 endoflames, a mana spreader and a mana pool, which this one points into the mana pool. Uh, the way this works is that endoflames uh, consume some sort of a fuel in order to generate mana. Here I'm using coal, and in order to not to waste the coal, we have a weighted pressure plate, which is hooked up to this redstone torch, and this one powers the dropper. So every time that a coal is consumed, a signal is given to the dropper, it puts one coal inside the open crate from Botania and it drops here and it gets consumed. So when the mana pool is full, this will stop functioning and uh, it will not waste coal. We just have to wait for a little bit of mana. One mana pearl and one runic altar. Uh, 
I was thinking, is it possible to connect a crucible to a sink? Oh. Okay. Well, that's a nice substitute for the Everfull urn. <laughs> I mean, that's a difficult thing to craft. I wanted to make a Sojourner's Sash and unfortunately the recipe for it has been changed so we need an alchemical brass. Alchemical brass is made inside a crucible and it needs instrumentum. I think the best source for it is flint so we drop the flint then we drop the iron. No. Okay we do it one by one. Oh yeah it does work. Then we drop the rest and we use the rest of the iron. Oh, and I need quartz because we have essential left in there and I think it's, we have to take it out. I made some, yeah. So uh, this way you don't get that much flux and you also get extra essential, which is always nice. I'm just dropping it back, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, it's going into my pouch. Okay, so the recipe for the band of mana has been changed. So we require a mundane ring and that requires a native gold cluster. So we need to get much deeper into Tomcraft, but for now I'm using a mana tablet. And with my Sojourner Sash, I can run very fast and it gives me step assist. And also I think I can jump two blocks if I find something which is two blocks high. Yep, there you go. This is a very neat thing. Uh, and also, uh, my benevolent charm will help me. I will take damage, but it will not damage the environment. So that's good. No more creepers and I'll be very happy. All right, guys, it's also time to wrap up the episode. Uh, it doesn't seem that we achieved much apart from or tripling from mechanism, but we did do a lot of quests. Uh, we had to get into different mods, so I got a lot of loot chests and a lot of food. Um, we did it mainly in Tomcraft, Astral Sorcery and Botania. And I don't need to cook for a while, which is very good. Um, next episode, I will try to continue with these three mods as well as getting into blood magic because blood magic will give me the ability to fly if it has not been disabled. <laughs> And then I can go into the nether, find the fortress, get some wither skeletons, spawn some withers and get some nether stars. After that hopefully life will progress because um, this is not good. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.